What's that, Sonny? You have to speak up. I've got a bad line. Can you take a holiday away from the popular coastal towns, take the path less travelled and still have a good time? That's what we're looking to answer. Wajin Historical Village is one of possibly two historical villages that you can visit in Western Australia. It's a collection of buildings from the 1800s that have been relocated from other parts of the region and some rebuilt to the style of yesteryear to create this amazing step back into the early pioneering days. At the time of our visit, entry fee was six bucks for an adult, which is pretty good price for these days. Where you lived had an influence on what your house might be built out of, like this mud brick house for instance. We say in the old days, but there are still people around today that can remember back to the simple way of life. It's not that far back. The paper was about the only way for the news of the day, or last month's news, to get passed around, including the printing of wanted posters to aid in the tracking down of criminals of the day. The words of the paper were put together one letter at a time on a plate by a typesetter. Everything had to be written backwards so it would be printed the correct way to read in print. A good typesetter could read the plate like he was reading the actual paper. Then it was off to the press for printing. Remove the grass and throw a bit of dirt around and you could feel like you're walking in the 1860s. In the day, a trip to the bank meant actually talking to someone to get money out or deposit money. The weighing of your gold was an important role of the bank. A school would have kids from all ages in one room. Who remembers these wooden desks? I do. And who got one of these? Tell us in the comments. Teacher! 
Almost every man wore a suit, and these were handmade. And of course women always had fancy dresses which were also handmade. So the town tailor was pretty busy. I think you can take a little bit off the sides for me. The village bakery. Fresh bread made every day in the shop. And let's not forget about those cakes. The boot maker was just as important as the tailor. The post office was not only where you sent your mail. When telephones were invented, the lines were managed by the post office. This is the telephone exchange where an operator would connect your call to who you wanted to talk to. The corner shop where you would purchase your weekly supplies and no doubt catch up on the weekly gossip. Every second person was religious back then, so every Sunday it was off to church. You know, I can remember when I was in primary school, we used to have bells like this is there, we used to do um, recess and lunchtime and, and the end of day and at the end of the day you used to get this go bang 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 really really loud because it was the end of the day time to go home very loud the dunny out the back you can still see these out the back of some old houses today although I hope not being used The old hall is filled with lots of bits and pieces. What I like about this is hearing other people talk about the time they remembered about an item. But there wasn't anyone else around here, so I'll just have to remember using some of these things myself. A collection of old radios. When you watched a movie, like in school, it was played on a projector like these machines. Wow, so many of these things I used to use when I was a kid are in a museum. 
I don't know if I like the sound of that. To look at photos, you use a slide projector. We had these in my school. These are just a few of the old tractors on show. Who remembers these pumps? A little bit before my time. But I think you put the handle in how many litres you wanted, filled it up at the top where the glass was, and then you took the nozzle down, put it into the car and actually filled your car up until that was empty. That's how you got your uh, one, two, three, five, six gallons of fuel. The start of the machinery age would have been a huge relief to the man on the land, and if you're an old machinery enthusiast, You'd be throffing at this shed. Most of the engines look like they could start and run right now. What a shame it doesn't. I think this first light might have been a railway light, but the others were used for roadworks. Before LED road signs, they were the only indication of roadworks. They had a candle in them, which you almost couldn't see until you were next to it. The old fire shed. If you were on call, you stayed in the station till you were relieved. The old Bedford fire truck was from the Wagen fire station and is still in working order. But the woman at the front desk just told us the story um, of a young bloke actually. I, I don't know if he was the owner of this or whatever, but he, um, he said when he dies he wants to be taken to the cemetery in the fire truck. And unfortunately the bloke did die rather early and um, they had to uh, re-license the thing for the day, just so they can get on the road, put the fella in the back and take him to, uh, to his final resting place. This place is actually a lot bigger than it looks. There's a lot more at the back here. The rail was an important part of country life. It was the best way to travel to your destination. It carried produce to the markets and brought supplies to the towns. A number of towns started after a rail siding was already in place. Hello? Yep, I don't think the trains are running today. Then there's another shed filled with old trucks and equipment. Some of the old trucks have been restored.
And if you got sick, then here's your medical aid. The Mark II Stretcher. We used them in the 1980s when I was in the SES. Not even going to touch this one. If you don't know what it is, Google it. Yep, use that in the SES too. A stockyard of the day. Typical house from the period. So a house from the past, now this would probably be considered to be luxury, you know. It's a two room house down here. We've got I guess kitchen table perhaps. You do your cooking in here. The old, I was gonna say cowgully safe, but I don't think it's a cowgully safe, it's just a storage stuff so that the flies don't get to it. Behind the curtain here. You've got your uh, bedroom. Oops. Got your bedroom down here. So, uh, pretty much a um, two bedroom place. Timbers on the roof. All made out of local bush that they could find around the place. I'll tell you what, life was hard back then, wasn't it? Considering what we have these days. And that was a lap of luxury. This here, this is really basic. This is how people would have lived in the uh, in the gold fields um, when they first gone out there looking for gold and things like that. A bit of hessian over some timber. A uh, little bunk in here. And some storage. Not very weatherproof. Not very good against the uh, the, the cold or the heat. They certainly did a tough in the old days, there's no doubt about it. See now what they could do, hook this phone up to that other phone that was in the uh, train station. People could talk to each other, that's a good idea. You know, it's, it's not no Sovereign Hill in Ballarat, but I could see this place with some actors around. Bakery, they could cook stuff at the bakery, make some breads and things, flog them off to the people. You know, uh, actors there in the, uh, or volunteers in the, um, in the bank, in the printing works, they could print stuff off, wanted posters and things like that, like they used to do in other um, villages and things like that. Um, yeah, it's, I reckon the place has got potential. It's amazing. Big place this is. And uh, plenty to see. I've been here for probably, I don't know, a couple of hours maybe. So well worth coming in and having a look if you're in the Wagen area. Well, that brings us to the end of our visit here. I've only showed you some of it. There are heaps more to see. And it looks like they have plans to expand in time also. Wagen is only about three hours from Perth and it would make a great family day out to come here and have a look around. Or even with accommodation in town you could make a weekend trip of it. Either way, it's worth checking out if you're passing by. In our next video we're going to go to Double Young and talk about a world record. So till then, happy travels.
nothing to see here. Go away. Thank you.